<clears throat> wow, sorry about that. <laughs> Very good morning to you. I am still in the echo. There we go. There's no camera. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing then. <laughs> Can you see me new? Are we good? Amen. Praise the Lord. Glad that uh, you're able to join with us here this morning. And, uh, and, uh, and praise the Lord together. And uh, I'm glad that some of you are here. <laughs> A lot of people that are not here. Um, but we're praying for everyone's uh, wellness and, and well-being and, and uh, um, come and join us in church <laughs> so if you can. Anyway, but praise the Lord for his goodness and thank the Lord for George's lesson last week and, and I appreciate that. Uh, this morning we're going to be continuing along with the same kind of theme but uh, afterwards and then uh, there's Zoom this afternoon but we're starting at one o'clock um, but when we're watching a film. So it'll be one o'clock, so two hours from now, whatever time zone you're on, but two hours from now, because it's 11 a.m. our time, so in just, well, two hours, you know, on the hour, <laughs> is, or one hour and 54 minutes, <laughs> you know, for some of you, depending if that clock is right, um, we are going to be watching a film. But I'll put it on Zoom. It'll be the same link as normal, and if you'd like to, to watch that, we'll be, we'll be putting that on for, for everyone, and uh, I'll certainly enjoy that this afternoon. So I'm looking forward to that. I haven't seen it for a long, long time. And uh, so it'll be, it'll be good, good. Uh, to I don't think I've seen it. We have seen Christmas Eve It's a, it's, it's, it's really good. It really, yeah, you'll enjoy it. Um, so, but, uh, yes, definitely. Definitely. So, but, uh, so that'll be on Zoom this afternoon. So it'll be at one o'clock uh, and certainly enjoy that. Uh, I do have a YouTube link for it as well. Uh, I thought we'd watch it all together. I mean, if some folks are going home, obviously, I understand that. Um, uh, you could watch it on your tablet or whatever it is. But if you, for some reason you're not able to, you can send me uh, a message and I'll send you the link so you can watch it other times or share it with everyone else. But anyway, we're going to have a good time. And uh, praise the Lord for, for being, being here in church this morning. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll go to, uh, we'll go to him and worship. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we come in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for your goodness and for your blessings, Lord. And just pray you be with upon us this morning, Lord, to help us uh, to focus on you, help us to, to really bring a spirit of worship this morning, Lord, and, and just uh, be attentive to, to your voice and to the things that you would have for us today. Lord, I pray you would lead and direct in the, the singing and in the, in the message and everything that's done today that be for your honor and glory. Lord, we're so grateful and thankful for your goodness and and um, just continue to bless. And I pray that you would bind every wicked and evil thing that should come against us this morning and loose the spirits of truth, love, power, and a sound mind upon us all. We thank you for those that are here. Thank you for those that are watching at home. And pray for those that are not well enough to be here, that they uh, might be with us again very, very soon. Again, we thank you, Lord. We love you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's stand our feet if you can. And we shall sing a couple of songs here this morning. <coughs> <clears throat> we need to do power in the blood at least um, because we were told yesterday by a fellow he was getting ready uh, for a church he said well the only problem is we've got no power at the church and I'm thinking well there's power in the blood mate there's power in the blood it's like you know, <laughs> There's power in the blood, this is power in the blood. Wouldn't you want to read the victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, there's wonder working power in the blood. I'm Power in the blood, you see, there's power in the blood. I'm gonna 
Just thinking, everybody that's here puts in my direct debits. <laughs> so, we'll just do it anyway, shall we? <laughs> oh no, we've got some. There we go. <laughs> Thank you very much. And if you'd ask the blessing, anyway, we would absolutely need that. Let's start this morning. We turn to you with a grateful heart and say thank you for being able to gather together here in your presence. Be able to sing these wonderful words that we've sung this morning. And there is power in the blood. Mm -hmm. And this means so much to each one of our hearts, Lord, as we gather each Sunday. We do now just thank you for this offering. As we take it, we ask you to bless it and use it for the benefit of our church and those who need it. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I haven't played the nose whistle for a while. <laughs> Thank you, George. Thank you. Thank you 
you so much. <laughs> oh, I don't have a song for this morning. <laughs> uh, it suddenly just occurred to me. I'll see if I've got something there. Um, sure, I've got to, we'll figure out something. Uh, we'll do another one of the of these ones. Where am I standing? Am I here or there? I don't remember what it's singing. I think it's there. <laughs> I think presentation, I'm over here and it's there. I don't remember. Let's stand our feet and we shall sing a song, another song this morning. The Rock of Ages, left for me. something that we can do this morning. Let's 
that seems appropriate. Done it before, but it's here. <laughs> this one's called, I can't wait to get to heaven because I'll get a new back. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's not, but I'm going to write that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a completely different song. I'm sitting here just waiting heaven for the answer prayer. Sometimes the devil whispers, do you think God's really there? This old deadline's coming soon. Fear's knocking at my heart. God doesn't need a pocket watch. Tell him when to start. Oh, he's never late, he's never wrong. God's always right on time. Ways are almost perfect. It'll be at the midnight chime. He don't want my ticket box in by my borderlines. There's never been a moment we got it right on. God's able to supply that need Just when I need it most Still able to give miracles Right when I hope is lost Puts delays within my past Keep me from the snare And just the time I need I know he's always there He's never late, he's never wrong God's always right on time His ways are always perfect He'll beat the midnight child He don't walk by ticking clocks in by the borderline There's never been a moment we got it right on time. So when I face my own Red Sea, with Satan at my heels, perhaps God will start to move when I stop standing still. He's never late, he's never wrong, God's always right on time. His ways are always perfect, repeat them in the shine. He don't walk by ticking clocks in by my borderlines. And there's never been a moment we got it right on. There's never been a moment we got it right on time. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. It actually works very well with the message this morning, so <laughs> praise the Lord. Um, so just have to leave random song lyrics down here. 
Uh, I had found a strong lyric, but I forgot my lesson notes. Uh, so they're on the printer there. If you, if you grab them for me, please. Call the note giver. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I had to laugh. Um, um, somebody was. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and um, you know, we, did, we talked about things. And he said, "Oh, I'm I'm busy preparing my sermon for for tomorrow." You know, and he said, "You can't go wrong with Easter." I said, "Well, it just depends which one you're celebrating." Uh, he said, the real one, I said, with the, with the Ishtar's bunny and the eggs. And, no, 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 the real one with Jesus. I'm like, well, the real one is the other one with all the eggs and the bunnies and stuff. That's named, it's literally named after Ishtar. It's like, <laughs> that's funny. And uh, so he, he tried to pull it back. I was like, well, you know, um, you're a week late. But anyway, it's like, so it's all good. Anyway, but, um, but uh, it is amazing how um, we live in a world where everyone wants to do their own thing. Um, and we've done this for it's been done with this for years it's like god had that problem with it with his children in the old testament as well it's like god says these are the times i want you to worship me in this way and this is the way i want you to do it in this time and these are the things that this is how i want to be worshipped because god's like i created you um, and i know what you're capable of and this is the way i want you to do it and humans went no oh we'll do that for when it's convenient and they did it for a while and of course, when they came out of Egypt and had the freedom to do things, they were still like, no, we want to do it this way. And all the way through the Old Testament, they're like, uh, God's like, well, I want you to do this way. And they're like, oh, yeah, we'll do it that way. And then they're like, no, we're going to do it this way. You know, and then other times they're like, well, I like the way they did it over there. And God's like, but they're heathen. I don't want you to do that. I don't want, I don't want that form of worship because that's worship to another God. And they're like, oh, but, 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 but that looks like fun. So we'll do that. We'll take that and we'll make it about you. And God's like, no. Which part of this is the way I want you to worship me? The more, more I go on, the more I, 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 it, it's, it, it's incomprehensible. I understand that back in the day, we didn't understand and know these things. And I, not a lot of times that. But in today's society, we, there's so much knowledge going about that it's just it's hard to 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 not do that and we have to specifically ignore things um to just stay in our own little bubble of of ignorance and just hope and pray that god doesn't judge people <laughs> that way but the thing is there's so much knowledge out there that we can look and see and we can we can w live accordingly to the word of god i understand when people don't have the word of god but folks we live in a country that we can get bibles everywhere there's bibles in hotels there's bibles on our phones bibles on the internet you know, everywhere we've got a stack of Bibles that we can give out to people that don't have a Bible. So, uh, you know, we've, we're very thankful that we have that. But yeah, even with all this knowledge at our fingertips, people still choose to be ignorant. Um, and that's a sad, sad thing. But that's a, that's a heart condition and sometimes a head condition as well. I have to get out of it. George brought a fantastic message. Uh, well, I shouldn't say the fantastic because a fantasy, fantastic means fantasy. And it wasn't fantasy at all. It was truth. And uh, a wonderful message. I think we'll call it a wonderful thing because Jesus' name is wonderful. A wonderful message last week about the resurrection. And so I wanted to kind of continue on from that uh, today. Uh, look at some of the things that happened after that and bring out a few things that we might um, uh, understand. Because uh, we, we, we want to to look at things here and so we're going to we're going to be in a few passages this morning and uh, really it's the, it's the last chapters of the gospels that's where we're going to be so we're going to start in mark 16 we're going to go luke 24 and then we're going to be in john 20 uh, and finish some things off so here in mark chapter 16 i want to read through this because um um i want you to 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 get something all right i want you to get something before we we go on to to john i want to let's to put a little bit of background and remembrance of what's happened i mean we all know that jesus rose from the dead praise the lord hallelujah um you know we're, we're sitting here that's not that's not new news to us it's great news it's always great news and we thank the lord every day for the resurrection uh but we understand that and in mark chapter 16 verse 9 i would just want to read that last uh part there because i want you to uh, want you to note something uh here in this 
It says in verse, in verse 9 of Mark chapter 16, Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that they had been with him, and they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. Why would she make that up? That's my first question. Why would she make that up? And second of all, why would they think she had made that up? Because they had known her. This is someone that they have known and of good reputation, but they didn't believe her. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. Those are the, the men's obviously going to Emmaus, as we read about later on. And they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. So there's two witnesses, but they still don't believe. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and abraded them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go and preach ye into all the world, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. But these signs shall follow you, follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat in the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we come in the mighty name of Jesus. We're so thankful for the resurrection and thank you for the blessings that we can able to have church here today. Bless the reading of your word and bless this message as we look into it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So here's two things. And in the chronology of Luke here, it says that he had appeared to Mary and it appeared to Cleopas on the road to Emmaus before he appeared to the disciples. According to this, because it says, afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. Oh, sorry. No, no, that would be the week after because there's eleven. My mistake. Because the day of the resurrection, he appeared to how many was there? Well, Judas is hanging about somewhere else. So there's ten. Because Thomas wasn't there. So when he says 11, that's obviously so. So apologies for that. Um, but I want to get to that. Um, uh, about Thomas and, and everything like that. But these questions we have to ask ourselves is that, you know, I mean, I'm guessing, you know, what's Luke? Well, no, actually, if we take it, if they told it to the residue, neither do they believe them. So it's, it's, it's a case of that here is people telling of Jesus' resurrection. I want us to understand this, this important fact. That these are all Jesus' disciples. These are disciples of Christ. They've seen miracles. They've seen amazing things happen. But they do not believe that Jesus has risen from the dead when other disciples are telling them so. They have seen people raised from the dead. They've seen the blind see, deaf hear, lame walk, Sickness is cast, lepers healed, all these things. They've seen water turned into wine. They've seen the 5,000 fed. They've seen this, the sea calm, the storm calm. They've seen all these things. But they do not believe that Jesus has risen from the dead, even though it's from a credible source, these things. So then, when we tell people that Jesus has risen from the dead, who are not disciples, who are not scriptural based people and we start talking about these things how much more difficult is it for them to believe that Jesus is risen from the dead I want you to understand the task that we have of telling people and how blessed as Jesus said we are for believing that he has risen even though we have not seen him personally but we have the eyewitnesses of those that did see him personally 
But notice that Jesus abrades all of them. He doesn't go, we always pick on Thomas because he didn't believe. None of them believed. None of them believed that he had risen from the dead. John runs to the sepulcher and he believes. He, he believes right there. But, there but, but it takes that for him to see to believe. He makes a big point of that, but it's like, well, he still had to go and find and see for himself. None of them took the words of, of the other disciples or the other uh, followers of Jesus that he had risen from the dead. So if his followers are not believing, how, like I said, how much more difficult is for those that don't follow him to, to start to believe that Jesus is indeed risen from the dead? It's a big belief. For us that have not seen Jesus, but none of us would even think that he hasn't. Because since we believed, look at all the things that he has done in our lives. And we are convinced, and he has proven time and time again, that he is indeed alive. Because of all the things he's done in our lives. And it's these things that we have to show to people. And show the wondrous works that Jesus has done in our lives. And we can say, yes, this is indeed proof that Jesus has risen from the dead. And because of these things, and because of the things he's done, we have a hope and eternal life that he is coming back. And if we go to meet him before that, then we have assurance that we will be with him. And then we'll come back with him. Wonderful things. In Luke chapter 24 and verse 8, it says, And they remembered his words, and they returned from the sepulcher. I'll just read there. If you want to turn over to John 20, we'll get there in a minute. Um, they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women that were with him, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed not. Then arose Peter and ran to the sepulcher, stooping down, and he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering himself at what was come to pass. Right. So here we do find that clearly Thomas has been told that Jesus is alive because, he appeared to, uh, because they've told the 11. Right? Jesus only appears to 10 of them later on. So where was, where was Thomas? We don't know when Jesus appeared to him. But here, all, all of them have heard that Jesus is alive. But yet, none of them believe. Peter and John, of course, run and see what happens. John makes a point of saying he did outrun <laughs> Peter. Well, Peter's old. It's like, you know, it's like, it's, you know, John's a little young fella. It's like, no, no surprise there. You know, he's like, ha, ha, ha I run out, outrun Peter. <laughs> So let's go and see what uh, was become of Thomas. In John chapter 20, verse 19, it says, The same day, even being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed them his unto them his hands and his side, and their disciples then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said, uh, uh, breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whomso whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So, let's back this up with his disciples. It's it said that they didn't know the scripture that he should rise from the dead. But Jesus had told them many times and told all these things that were, were going on. Now we have to give the disciples credit that they did not have the Holy Spirit working in them continually as we do today. And even having that gift today of the, the Holy Spirit indwelling us, we still don't utilize him as much as we should. Because here in the Old Testament, or in the Old Testament times, the Holy Spirit only came on certain people at certain times. If you look at Samson, it said the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Now, there we're talking about the filling. Uh, there's, uh, let me back up. Sorry. 
I used the wrong term, indwelt. They were indwelt by the Spirit because they were saved. They were sealed. But they did not have the filling of the Spirit constantly. Uh, some of maybe you've picked up on that. I hope you did. If you didn't, what's wrong with you? You've been here watching it, right? Um, all right. But we have everyone since salvation began has had the indwelling of the Spirit, right? Because that's when the Spirit comes into our spirit and seals our spirit on the day of redemption, meaning we are gods, right? We're born again of the Spirit, and that has happened both in New and Old Testament. That always happens. So these disciples were sealed with the Holy Spirit. They were indwelt by the Holy Spirit, but they did not have the filling of the Holy Spirit that we can have today. And it came upon them at certain times. So we have to understand that, that they were not as guided as they could have been uh, in, in these things. But still, when you think of these trusted people that have come and said, we've seen Jesus. And they're like, nah, nah, no, you haven't. No, you haven't. These are his 12 or his 11 picked disciples he's got many other disciples that follow after him but these are the these are the ones that he's hand chosen his inner circle uh, or, and then there's an even inner circle with peter james and john who are an inner inner circle you know and they're like the deacons of the group and but they're all in misery here and here is some good news that jesus has risen again from the dead from a credible source. What, what, I have to think, what, well, what were you thinking? Because Mary, and the, they've seen him. They said, we've seen Jesus. It's not like some random came up and said, hey, I, you know that dude they crucified? I saw him walking about. They're like, yeah, 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 okay, right. right. But they knew who he was. They knew what he looked like. So when they said they've seen Jesus, they're not going to make a mistake. <clears throat> They didn't believe them. They didn't believe others. And Jesus has abraded them for their, their unbelief, but, but John misses out that part. <laughs> John misses out that part that Jesus got all over them about unbelief. He focuses there on Thomas. Now, Thomas has got an interesting name. It's called Didymus. Didymus? Yes, he did. Did he miss the gathering? Yes, he did. Did he miss Jesus? Yes, he did. Right. Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus. Right. Some interesting names in the Bible, like the other one that fell out of the loft, Eutychus. Why? Because Eutychus, too, he fell from a great height. Um, so you always remember Thomas by Didymus. Why? Because yes, he did was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see the hand in his hand, the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. So, Thomas, you've heard from the women. You've heard from the two on Emmaus. And now you're hearing from the ten disciples. He still doesn't believe. We realize now how great a task it is for us to tell people that Jesus has risen from the dead. And we realize how great a task it is because without that belief, there really is no salvation. If Jesus be not raised, we are still in our sin. We're yet in our sin, I think is what the scripture says. So it's, it, it realizes the, how great our God is. Because when we think of all these other people, all these other religions, all these other groups, and how easy it is for people to be convinced into that. None of them have risen from the dead. None of them. None of them are recorded being risen from the dead. Buddha is still dead. Muhammad still dead. All these leaders still dead. But Jesus is alive. It was unheard of. I mean, we've grown up a lot of things hearing this. 
But there are still people that do not believe. So you can understand that they don't believe. But as Jesus goes on to tell, after eight days, it says in verse 26, the disciples were within and Thomas was with, with them. Then came Jesus, his doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger. Behold my hands, reach hither thy hand, and thrust it in my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto Thomas, Because thou hast seen, thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Listen to this. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. Read that again. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. <clears throat> and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Now, we don't know what he did. We do not know the, the miracles or the signs that he did. We will not know these. And they are specifically not written for that purpose. They were for them and for them alone. Just like there are things that Jesus will do in our lives that are for us and for us alone. There's times that we will talk to Jesus. And there's times that he will commune with us and we will talk with him and he will commune with us. Or, or, or whatever in the case may be. This is just for us. It's for no one else. But notice it said, blessed are those that have not seen. That's us. There is a blessing for just simply believing that Jesus is risen from the dead. To me, I grew up hearing about Jesus. So to me, it's not a big deal to believe because I grew up with it. And as an adult, I'd look at it and thought, well, if God is God, it's still not a big deal. I mean, what is a big deal is going, let there be light. Let the earth bring forth, let the seas be gathered together, let this, let this, let this, to speak things into existence. I mean, Jesus, you know, God in the Old Testament has raised people from the dead. Jesus himself has raised people from the dead. It's not a big task in God's arsenal of miracles. <laughs> When we consider who God is, we go, well, if he's God, no big deal. A virgin conceiving? No, that's impossible. But if God is God, not that big a deal. We think it's impossible that a virgin would conceive and have a child without natural means. But we are talking about the God who designed that mechanism and then made that mechanism in a living, breathing, organic human being. He designed it. He made it. He made us. He designed us. He made us. He took all that care of over these things. It is not a big deal for God to have a virgin conceive. And if he can create life by speaking it, then it is not a big deal for God to raise someone from the dead. It really isn't. And the disciples and things had seen all of these things happen. Now, I'm not going to get on them and say, because there's lots of things that, that we have had unbelief for in our life. Even though that we've seen things happen, even though we've seen things, we still sometimes don't believe that things will go one way or the other. <clears throat> so we're all guilty of unbelief at some point. But when we get to the point of unbelief, or we get to the point of doubt or fear, the crucial thing is that we go back to that point where God said, let there be light. Let there be firmament in the midst of heaven. 
Let the seas be gathered together into one place. Let the dry land appear. Let the grass and the herb yielding seed and the fruit trees yielding fruit. Let the birds of the air, let the sea bring forth the birds and all the things that fish and that swim in the sea. And then let the earth bring forth the creeping thing and the fowl and the cattle. And let us create man in our image. In the image of God created he them. Male and female created he them. In times of crisis, in times of doubt and unbelief, we go very way back to the beginning. Because then when we start reading Genesis and we see who God is and what he has done and what he's capable of, not just in that he made it, but he carefully designed every single part of it. Designed every law. I mean, you know, if you ever did physics or any of these things, you studied all these things, started for thermodynamics and, and laws of gravity and, and uh, laws of motion, all of these things. Who created those laws? You know, and we're like, oh, Isaac Newton discovered It's like, yeah, he discovered it, but God created it. Laws of thermodynamics, all these laws that just basically prove God is who he is. And we decided that we're going to call it a law because <laughs> it's, it's unchangeable and it cannot be debated because it is what it is. But when we go back to these things, we see all the design that God did to the microscopic level, to the, to the tiniest detail in, our, in our, our finite human bodies. He created every little thing. Because if one thing is out of place, we don't work. If we build a computer or put electronic things and we have one component, Missing, or one component not working, the whole thing doesn't work. God even designed us to where sometimes if we have to have bits taken out, we can still work. But certain things won't. But if we ever start to doubt, if we ever start to get to the place where we're wondering about what God can do, let us go back to creation, let us see the power of God when he said, let there be light. He spoke things into his existence. He spoke it and it became. Not only that, he made the things that he made the things out of. This is what's incredible to me. There was nothing and then there was something. I used to creation ex nihilo, which means from nothing, from nothing. God created the materials that were needed to make. Now we've all made things. We've painted pictures. We've stuck pasta on a paper, a paper and painted it and stuff like that. We've, we've uh, made rocket ships out of toilet rolls. Of course, kids today are, will never get the chance to do that because it's apparently it's, it's very unsanitary to make things out of toilet rolls. Ah, so fair enough. We, we survived. Uh, <laughs> right? You know, we made a jet pack out of a cereal box and, and two fair liquid bottles. Right? You can't get their own ones anymore. Like, what's up with that? You know? like, we've all made things. But we took materials that existed and put them together and fashioned it into that. We did not create something. We made it from things that had been created. But even those creations, those things that have been made, the plastic and the paper, had to come from somewhere. They were formed into it. But see, God, when he said what he did in the beginning, he created the space, he created time, and he created matter. He created the elements, the base elements from what everything forms. He created the microscopic atoms, the electrons, the protons, the neutrons. He created those and formed them into elements. He created the electron clouds within that so that the, the different electrons and the different levels and the amount of electrons could, could form the different elements. 
and he created two that have one electron difference. But their value is vast. One is lead and one is gold. And they are so near to each other, the difference is one electron. One small part can change the value of so much. And then man has for years tried to turn lead into gold. <laughs> you can't do it. Well, apparently they can do it, but the cost effectiveness of it is it costs so much to do that that the end product is worth less than what it costs to actually do it. <laughs> it's quite funny. But God can just do those things. Remember what God can do. So then when we think about the virgin birth, no big deal. When we think about the resurrection of Jesus, we're thinking, what's to think about? Do you know who God is? He said, let there be light. And there was light. Raising Jesus from the dead? Heh. No big deal for my God. And then we get to a point where we go, that God can sort my problems. God can help me. God can do the impossible in my life too. When we doubt, when we fear, when we have those things, we just remember who God is and said, we are serving the, the, the creator of the universe, our designer. Okay, we have some blips, we have some unbelief, but when we go back to those things and had they... Had they been in a place, these disciples had been in a place where they could go back and remember who God was, they'd be like, wow, cool. Because they had literally seen people risen from the dead. But it takes Jesus to be amongst them for them to see and believe all of them. All of them. But yet, through the course of the rest of the Bible, we see many people believing because of the preaching of the gospel. And that is us today as we have believed because of the preaching of the gospel and believe that Jesus is risen again. And folks, we are called blessed for that point. We cannot show them Jesus risen from the dead, but we can show them what's happened to us because Jesus is risen from the dead. And that is where our testimony lies. That's where we are witnesses of the things that we have experienced in our lives. So we have experienced the resurrection of the Savior. We have not seen him, but we have experienced him. And that experience is where our witness is. And so we can say, Jesus is indeed risen from the dead. Though we were not there, we have witnesses that were, and we believe those witnesses because their witness is true, plus the fact of the things that Jesus has done for me. That's why I think it's important always to go back to creation, to establish who God is. Because if we establish who God is, then we say to somebody, well, why, why is it impossible? If, if God created all these things, then it's, not, it's clearly a bit of a doddle for him, isn't it? But I found more often than that, the people that have objections to Jesus rising from the dead, when we start talking about creation, and I start talking about who God is, they're like, well, yeah, if he's God, then that's not a big deal for him. Always go back to creation. Always go back because it establishes who God is. It establishes his, his, his prominence. It establishes his power, his care too over every little thing that he designed and the things that are not seen. The things that are, are, are made from the things that are not seen. Microscopic things. There's things that we will never discover on this planet that God has made. He goes, I know they're there. There could be animals and things. There could be T-Rexes still kicking about somewhere. All right? They might be about this tall. You never know. But there could be dinosaurs somewhere in the world. And they were looking over these dinosaurs and, and they're like, we know we're here. And God's like, I know where they are. You know, <laughs> it's like. But when we get in a place that we're down, go back to creation. 
Instead, go back to that cornerstone because that is the corner, one of the cornerstones of our faith. And again, it proves to us how powerful God is and what he can do in our lives. And when we're facing something difficult, we know that, that God is perfect. His timing is always perfect. Everything he does is there is perfect. And we can trust him a whole lot more when we go back to that point. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we come in the name of Jesus. We're just so thankful for your goodness today. Thank you for your blessings, Lord, and I pray that you would bless now in our invitation. Lord, I pray for those that are struggling for, with whatever it is. I pray for healing, Lord, for those that are, are in need of that. I pray for strength and wisdom and comfort and, Lord, um, uh, um, the provision where it's needed as well, Lord, that we might all be blessed. Lord, we thank you for the resurrection. We thank you for your goodness to us, Lord, and I pray you continue to bless in all things that we do. In Jesus' name, for his sake, amen. amen. If you need to come this morning, please do. Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, again, we come to you today. Thank you for your blessings and for all you've done. Blessing this afternoon and our film, Lord, that it would be a blessing to each one and that we might gain from it. And pray you'd help us this week to be encouraged and, and stand strong in all that we do, Lord, to remember who you are and what you've done and share uh, the resurrection of Jesus and the good news of the gospel with folks. Lord, we thank you. We love you. Pray this in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen and amen. God be with you. See you in a bit. And remember, we'll be starting in just about an hour um, for uh, our film. So we'll see you then.